So these are my favorite set of equations, um, not in the world, but for this class. So this is, we've been, uh, we have showed you these equations before. You don't really, because you haven't had reaction engineering, you don't really know exactly where they come from, so that's okay. You just want to take them as an example that you want to integrate these equations, okay? Just so you have some idea what's going on here, we're taking a reactant A, we're putting it into this reactor, we're mixing it up, and a reaction of A goes to B is taking place, okay? The system is well mixed. It has some volume V. The fluid has a density rho. The inlet flow is Q. The inlet composition, like, you know, I'd have to see what units I use, maybe moles per kilogram. I'm not totally sure what the composition units are. Kilograms, kilomoles per meter cubed, okay? Reactions taking place, and then you're removing a mixture of A and B. Obviously, if the reaction is A goes to B, you hope it comes out to mainly B, because if it's, if it's a lot A, you didn't have any conversion, okay? And then I make some assumptions which aren't so critical to you, so let's not worry about them. But let's say we have two, so these are two nasty, nasty is not a technical term, um, naughty differential equations that involve the composition of the component A. That comes from a component balance. So how did I get these equations? I did an overall mass balance. And by an overall mass balance, because it's constant volume, constant density, I just proved what goes in comes out. So that's not that exciting. I did a component balance either on A or B. I chose to do it on the reactant A, and I got this equation here. Accumulation in minus out consumption by reaction. Okay, so it was a mass balance. You don't know the details, but you'll learn, okay? And then I did an energy balance on this system. This term came from accumulation. There's enthalpy coming in, enthalpy leaving. Obviously, these equations have been rearranged a lot, so that's not directly enthalpy. That's where the terms came from. Accumulation, energy, en energy in, energy leaving in the exit stream, energy generated by reaction, energy removed by, by cooling, right? So to control the temperature of this reactor, I remove heat from it, okay? All right, so if you look at these equations, first of all, they're clearly nonlinear, right? Because temperature appears in an exponential and multiplies the composition of A. That's nonlinear. Um, they're coupled together, right? This equation involves temperature and composition. So does this one. And th this is a really nonlinear system. So this is hopeless to think about solving this problem using um, anything but a tool like MATLAB, OK? All right, and then here are the parameter values, OK? So I get, I've s I'm guessing you've heard these terms before. That's the frequency factor. That's the activation energy. That's the heat of reaction. Density and c heat capacity always multiply each other, so I just give you the combination. This is a heat, so-called heat transfer coefficient times heat transfer area. That's the gas constant. That's the volume of the reactor. That's the volumetric flow rate in and out of the reactor. That's the composition of A being fed to the reactor. That's the temperature of the feed stream to the reactor, and that's the temperature of the cooling jacket that removes heat. Got that? Okay, quiz time. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so here's, here's our goal, and I, I got a feeling we're not going to finish as early as I'd like, but that's okay, because it's more important that you understand how to do this than I lecture for 10 minutes. Otherwise, you'll have trouble doing the homework. All right, so first thing you're going to, so this is the goal, okay? If you take this model, first thing you want to do is find state. You already did this, in fact. You already did this first thing. You already took this model, and you found steady states for this. You, you remember this? You found three steady states. There was a low conversion, a medium conversion, a high conversion, also known as low temperature, medium temperature, high temperature. So you did that, right? I, I remember explicitly you doing that. No, nobody wants to agree they did it. <laughs> Does somebody want to agree they did this? Does this strike a bell? OK. That's what I want to hear, which, which I'll come to the implications of that. So once you find these steady states, then you want to use the same function you found to use the steady states to integrate the equations, okay? And what you're going to find when you integrate these equations is if, if they're at two of the steady states are st what call, or I'm in the middle of the lecture on stability, I haven't finished, but two of these steady states are actually stable, and two of these steady states, are, one of these steady states is not stable. St stable steady state means, yeah, it's a steady state to the equation, but if it's not stable, meaning the system doesn't want to stay there, okay? And two of them are stable. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. So since you already did this in the past, let me refresh your memory. Because I sense a little denial in the crowd. Okay? Here's all the evidence I need. Okay? You already have this, solved this problem. You're supposed to have solved it. 
you're supposed to have written a function that looks something like that. You can use that function again if you wrote it. Okay? If you didn't, if you didn't write this function, that means you didn't do this last thing that we did in class. This is nonlinear algebraic equation. Should have written something called, I called it CSTR. Okay? Then um, you're going to have to write it again. I'm just putting this slide up to mention that if you did this thing, it, you already have what you need. But if you didn't do this thing, then you need to write this thing right here. It's the same thing. It's just I just cut, it's the exact same thing. Okay? So I'm going to help you out because otherwise I think you won't make much progress. So the first thing you have to do is write this function. It's called CSTR.M. If you did the previous assignment, you should have this in your workspace saved as CSTR.M or something like that. If not, you have to write it now. Okay? What does it do, this function? Okay, MATLAB is going to give you a vector x. Okay? x is a vector consisting of the two dependent variables. Sometimes people ha ask me, well, how do I know what variable comes first and which variable comes second? It all depends on how you define your functions f down here. This is the component balance. That's the energy balance. That you're telling MATLAB the first element of x is ca and the second element is t. So MATLAB is giving you a vector x that has a value of ca and a value of t. And then you have two differential equations that depend on t and ca, and you have to integrate, you have to write a function that evaluates the right-hand side of that. It's nothing more than those, those, the right-hand side of those two equations right there, okay? So to do that, you have this normal syntax, right? You can put whatever name you want here, but it accepts a vector x, two components like that, from MATLAB. It returns a function f, which is this function here evaluated at whatever value MATLAB gave me. Okay, you don't have to worry why MATLAB gives you this value of x. It does. You just have to evaluate the function. First thing I'm going to do to make life easy, I'm going to find all these parameters. I could enumerate them for you. I mean, I'm not reading the numbers, but the frequency factor, activation energy, heat of reaction, so on and so forth. I gave names I would recognize. There's no magic in how you name things. Okay? So you wanted to find all those parameters using values I gave you on the previous page, which are listed here. So if you didn't do it, you can just copy that. And if you already have this function, sorry. <laughs> but, yeah? Keep writing that function. Don't let this guy distract you. Okay. I'm going to help him out. Oh, you have the same air? I, I can't see. I can't really see it. Why don't you come up front? Do you mind? All right. Put, let me see. So when I try running it, I get this error saying that at t, comma, x binary mixing x must return a column vector. Right, okay. So, where's your function? Uh, my function is... thought I fixed it. Okay. Okay, so at the bottom, put this thing here. Oh. Okay, try see if that works. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, you remember, you might have remember this, um, when I tried to figure if this command, I went through this once before, I tried to remember if this f equals f prime is necessary. And it's not necessary for f solve, but it is necessary for the differential equation solvers. So it, when you specify f like this, it assumes it's a row vector. Okay? So I'm, I'm turning it into a column vector by using this command. If you don't put that last command there, you're going to get some error from MATLAB saying, I need a column vector, and you're not giving it to me. Okay? So the safe thing to do is just put that at the end always, because it works in all cases. If you don't put that, it'll work for f solve, but it won't work for like the ODE 4.5. So just put that in there. It's just notational things. This MATLAB wants a column vector, and if you don't give it, it gets mad. And I, I think MATLAB getting mad is the last thing you want. All right? So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do this thing, and then we'll start to use it.
I wish I had a double projector and a double computer. So I could project like this over here for one group and then, hey, this is UMass. You're lucky to have a projector that works at all. I shouldn't complain. You guys would have liked the year that I came in here and every day the projector wouldn't work and I railed, railed against society. And then, um, and then the AV guy came in and I was angry and disrespectful and stuff. And then finally I realized I had a bad adapter. Um, had nothing to do with anyone but my own deficiencies. You'll find that in life. But you'll also find it's still the best approach to blame others. It'll if you blame others enough, people will believe you. Trust me. All right, so maybe just to, I realize it's a lot of typing to do, but, um, and maybe I'll come back to this. But let's start thinking about how we're going to use this thing. So the, the first goal is to see, which we already did in the past, is to see if you can find three steady states for this. So let me just leave this slide for a second. And so I issued this kind of command here. So it looks like this. I'm not very good at at signs. That's supposed to be an at sign. What's this thing called again? CSTR? And then I need a guess. Well, actually, no. And you should, so if you issue this command and you've got that thing written, then you should have got a steady state like this. So it spits back SSS1 equals, what's this thing, about 8.5? You guys are just have no sympathy for me. 8.56, there you go, 311.1 or 2 or something? Okay, you get an answer like this. So this is, this is very low conversion because you understand that the amount of A you put in was 10. The amount of A that came out is 8.5. That means only 1.5, like 15% went to B, and the other 85% you're just removing unreacted. That's not too good. Yeah? Sorry, why did you pick a range of 9 to 300? That's not a range. That's a guess, oh, oh. right? Because this is the F solve, so I'm guessing what I think the answer is. Gotcha. You just yeah. Said 9 to 300. What is that space? Oh, that's just the F. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, this is two this is what I think the steady state concentration of A is and what I think the steady state temperature is. Gotcha. Just a guess. And I, I get this. Not surprisingly, I get something kind of near my guess. That's the way this usually works. Okay? So if you guess that one, you'll get this steady state. And then you'll see I had two other guesses, because I want to find I know I know this problem has three steady states because it's a classic problem. What's my next guess? Five and three thirty? I tried this guess and got another steady state. That's intermediate conversion temperature. And then finally, I guess this. Right? And I, call, I called the steady state resulting from that guess SS1, because I wanted not. I called this SS2, and I called the steady state I got from that SS3, just so I could store them all. So I otherwise, you'll override them every time you run. Okay. So is everyone with me on that one? No? People are like, not even close. Is it people need that cell or not? I, I tried to write that on the board so you could try it without. I can't, I'm not writing this on the board, but I can write that on the board. So if you get the first one, you should be able to get the subsequent ones. Let me rephrase my question. Has anyone got this answer yet? You got it? OK. I was going to mention, I didn't want to entice you too much, but there's a variety of thirst quenching <laughs> bottles that are available for whoever might finish first, all right? Come up and claim your prize. Um, this one's kind of nice. It has what appears to be dust on it. It's been here quite some time. But it is a camelback, so it will keep your drink quite cold or warm, depending on your choice. So anyway, it's, it's a, totally up to you. Should you want to steal, I mean, take one of these? That's fine. All right, so raise your hand. How about this? If you've been able to get this answer and you've actually tried. Actually, that's not the right answer. Because obviously, you got it. You tried. 
How about this? Raise your hand if you haven't got this answer and actually have tried. OK. So what's the problem? Are you getting errors? So there's two possibilities. One is you might get an error, it's MATLAB telling you something's wrong. Or you might just get a wrong answer. Like you might get an answer, but it may not be the answer that I have there, which means you're wrong. Okay. The usual problem is going to be you make a mistake down here somewhere. But you can you know, type a number here wrong as well, right? It has to be perfect. You want the right answer, there can be no errors. So everyone seems to have this, though. People seem to be uninterested in that. So you should be able to find these three steady, well, yeah, these three steady states right here, right? This is low conversion, low temperature, medium conversion, medium temperature, high conversion, high temperature. So if you need help, I can, I can help you. I'm lacking things to do up here. So just let me know if you're getting an error, and I can probably help you. S I helped him solve his error, and he won a complimentary drinking bottle. So I, too, could help you. <laughs> you just have to let me know. Input arguments of type double. And this is my function here. I thought I typed everything right, but apparently I must have done something wrong. So. Okay, I'm going to show you how you call it. That's good. Yeah. Failure in initial user supplied objective function evaluation. So F solve. You have F solve, right? Yeah, yeah I okay. use F solve. Okay, all right. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did it last. So this is the same syntax I'm using, right? It looks exactly yeah, the yeah, same. As far as I can tell, uh, something in the same. Yeah. Okay, now show me your function again. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe it's... The error message. It doesn't... Go back to the error message here. It doesn't, it doesn't make any real sense to me, this error message. Yeah, it, like you said, it kind of seems like I, it's like my MATLAB doesn't have f -salt, but like, but I'm pretty sure I've used it before. So, so just do, do this. I'm going to hit Control. Where's your Control C it or something like that? You have a control. You can just hit Control C, and then it goes. Okay. Now say help, help F solve. Because if it thinks it has it, it'll give you the help. If otherwise, it'll say I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so it yeah. has it. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't. So, so that's the command, right? Mm -hmm. That looks that looks fine. You just have to make sure like you don't have wrong parentheses and stuff like mm -hmm. that as well. Yeah, it looks like everything matches up. Yeah, and then show me the function one last time. Then I gotta, I yep. gotta, I don't exactly know what function f equals. I don't know what I don't know what the double. Uh, I don't see any. I'm just. Means, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I'm not sure what it's asking. Let, let me let me get these people moving, and then I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, sure. see if I can maybe help some. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. In the last step, I defined it a little bit. Look at that. I just put in, so if you have x like 0, I put x like number 0. I don't know if that affects it at all, but. Um, oh, so you've solved the steady state, now you're trying to integrate them? Yeah. OK. Yeah, I have it. If you scroll up, the rest is like. OK, you found it. OK. Did you do that? And you did the df thing, I said? You yeah, defined that df? Prime. df prime. Uh, no, so. Yeah, okay. All right, and the thing is called exercise you've got? Yeah. Okay, so show me the... And then I put in the... X round, okay. Round X, S, S. 
You had oh, one, one, you had one a is one after one, that. but see here you have a z an O and here you have a zero. Yeah, and then I fixed oh, okay. it. Okay, okay. It, I it said did you mean or something, and so then I corrected it mm -hmm. in the next line. And that gives you this thing. Yeah. Function f must return. Okay. Uh, but I thought we could. Okay, what do you? With putting the prime. Yeah, do you, can I see that? Right here. No, no, you don't put it there. Oh, I can see. You take that prime out and redefine f. Yeah, and just take that out. You don't put it there. Okay, now hit that. Okay, now go to your code, the file that you read, exercise.m. Yeah. Okay, that should do it. Now run it. And now run mm -hmm. that? Yeah. I'm not sure what it's doing, but it's not giving it so. it. So this could be a situation where, like, it should run faster than that. So mm -hmm. there might be, like, an error in the file, but it's not giving you the same error message, at least. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, check, check the M file to make sure everything looks so correct. Yeah. No, no you, don't put, you don't put it at that command that does the DF. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Can I just move it over here? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I gotta take this off because I can't see otherwise. Um, <laughs> students can have a lot less brightness than I need. Okay. So you have guessed different initial guesses, right? Mm. But you keep getting the same answer? Yeah. If you look at like the values like right here, they're, they're exactly the same. Right. Which is hard to understand. Um, can you show me your function, yeah. CSTR? <laughs> That's really weird. So I don't know, is that the right H? Is H minus 960? It seems like it should be a lot bigger than that. Or is that what I gave you? Um, I think so. 5960. So, so that's probably screwing things up. So when you start getting answers like that that don't make sense, but it is not giving you an error, like it's not giving you an error, right? It's just giving you answers that don't make sense. Usually there's something wrong in this file. Okay. So try, you can try that real fast and see if it makes a difference. But there might be other errors too. <laughs> Not sure. That looks right. Yeah. So if you're not getting the same answers, it might be a small error. But I think that error, the heat of reaction was so small that it wasn't generating any heat. So, yeah, it gave, kept giving you what seemed to be the same answer. Okay, so now that I've debugged almost everyone's code, but not, not everybody's. I failed once. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so now you have these three steady states. I'm sure some of you started to do this, right? First thing you want to do is, is issue this command. I already explained this to you, right? This takes the CSTR that has a single argument x and turns it effectively into a function that has argument t and x, so you can use it with the integrators as well as fsolve. And then I issued this command, which may seem a little bit weird, but what this does is it rounds the numbers to whole numbers. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to show you the difference between if you integrate from a steady state, steady state and an unstable steady state. So if you're at an, if you're at an unstable steady state, the system won't want to stay there. But if you're at that steady state to a high number of significant digits, it may take a really long time to see it go away from that steady state and I don't want to wait that long, so I'm just kind of rounding it so this, you'll see this more quickly, right? So like if you, you understand that if, if, the, if the computer had infinite precision, you understand the computer has finite arithmetic, right? It can only have so many significant digits. Like it can't have an infinite number. If it had an infinite number, you could stay at an st <laughs> unstable steady state, but what's going to happen is that 
let's say this is the steady state and this is, let's say, temperature and this is time. If you're really, really, really close to this, like 10 to the minus 10th away, it'll look like this for a very long time and then you'll see it leave. But this might be like, I don't know, three years. I don't, I mean, a simul not of your life, of simulation time, I don't know. But so what I'm doing is just moving this slightly away so it'll just go away much quicker if it's going to go away so I can see if the steady state is stable or not. If the steady state is stable and you move away, it's going to want to come back, right? Even if, so this just is like a small perturbation in the initial condition to see how this works. And so since I haven't run any of this stuff, I'm going to cheat here a little bit, just take that steady state. Oh. Huh, I guess, guess I didn't do something consistently here. So I had the steady state. I started from it. Oh. Now I have to debug my own code. <laughs> All right, let's see what I got here. I probably changed something. Didn't seem to care if I have F prime. <laughs> MATLAB's a random, uh, there, I'll just pretend like it did, right? It just ran without it, but. Um, now I know the code's right. I'm wondering if I changed some number up here, but it doesn't look like I did. So. All right, let me try something here. So this, let's say I want this number here. Okay, that's the right answer, I believe. L let's say now I want to integrate from that answer. Oh. I shouldn't have called that TNX one, whatever. It's not supposed to look like that. That's temperature going to absolute zero. Okay. <laughs> this is what I mean by look at your results and see if they make sense, right? I've just taken a reactor and I've, I've brought it to absolute zero. My simulation has failed, but I've, been, I've won the Nobel Prize. Um, all right. So what, what have I done? I guess I just have to go through this a little more slowly. This steady state I happen to know is unstable. My goal is to show this to you. I'm going to start all over. Okay, so that looks right. And then I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to... Then I'm going to do this. That's why they pay me the big money, people. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let me, let me replot it a little different so that it's more, I like this double axis plotting because it's easier to see. 
like this guy here. This, so again, this, what this command does is it creates a plot with two different y axes. So it's called plot y, y, t2, which is the, for this problem I called everything 2. So time versus um, the first variable and time versus the second variable on two different axes, you get this. Okay? And so what you're, what you're seeing in this simulation is you started off at what was a steady state, but this steady, or at least very close, but this steady state's not actually stable. The system doesn't like to be there. So in other words, this is this thing you can only see if you integrate the equations, right? Because when you found F solve, you found three steady states. To you, they all look okay. They all look like steady states. But in reality, only two of them are actually stable. Only two of them the system likes to sit at. Low conversion to high conversion. This intermediate steady state, which is this one, it doesn't like to, to sit at. So you can see the concentration went way down to this number. The, uh, the temperature went way up to this number. And I think you'll see that's the high conversion steady state. So in other words, it went from this medium, this middle unstable one, it went up to the high con other steady state. The other, because it's stable. Right, so that I think you'll find what we called, you know, the three st X S S three or something like that. Okay, that's the temperature for that, and that's the composition for that. Okay, so I've, I've proven that I can solve it finally. <laughs> that's hey, if your professor can't do it, you shouldn't have to do it, right? Um, although I think that's usually not the case. Um, but so, does anyone need help trying to solve this thing? Okay, so one last thing, obviously gratifying, I won't be talking about any new material, is there's w there was one last objective here, okay? Right, and that's the plot I just showed you labeled and everything. So this is the last thing. I won't even do it, but you can try it. And it should look like this. So let's say you're interested in what the system looked like if you change some parameter of the model. This is a very common thing you do. Like if you have a s model of a process, you want to know what happens if I change the feed concentration or the feed flow rate or the, in this case, the jacket temperature, right? I think in the, the, the nominal value for this was 300 or 298, I can't remember, this T jacket. Since, no, since you guys never helped me out, 298, okay? I want to I change it to 310, okay? So what you can do is open up your file cstr.m and find the place you define TJ to be 298 and change that number to 310 and then save it. One thing you should learn in MATLAB is you, if, you, if you modify it but don't save it, it doesn't do it. So it's a very, I make this mistake all the time and it really sucks when it takes a long time to run and you get the exact same answer as you got the previous time. And you're like, ugh. Okay, so save it and then you can execute this command. Okay, so this is using the third steady state as the initial condition integrate, plot it, and you'll see it looks something like this, okay? So remember, if you kept the jacket temperature at 298, these would be flat lines. And so, so when you get a result like this, so you get this, and right, un unfortunately, a lot of people are happy with this because they're just like, it looks good. Um, so the question is, this makes sense. So what is the jacket temperature? The jacket temperature is a temperature of the the, the medium that we remove heat, right? It removes heat from the reactor. So if the temperature of the fluid that you're removing heat goes up, you're going to remove less heat. Does that make sense to you? Because, right, the amount of heat removed is the difference between the